about six miles south of the center of Rome in the place once called Aque Salvia, because of its many springs of water, stands the abbey complex known as the Abbey of the Three Fountains. A toponym, that of the Three Fountains, arose as a result of the death sentence of one of the pillars of Christianity. We're talking about the martyrdom of the Apostle of the Gentiles, St. Paul. On the 25th of January each year, the liturgy celebrates the feast of St. Paul's conversion. And we could call this liturgical date the triumph of divine grace, because Paul allows himself to be led by the will of God, a will that in some way also becomes an invitation, that certainly becomes an exhortation, which also becomes a laying down of the old man in order to clothe the new one. L'uomo vecchio per rivestire il nuovo. According to an apocryphal writing compiled between the 4th and 7th centuries, Paul was led chained under the escort of three soldiers to this place to be executed. Tradition tells us that at the moment of the apostle's beheading, his head falling to the ground is said to have made three bounces, from each of which a spring sprang. Hence the name, Abbey of the Three Fountains. To this day, the memory of the Apostles' martyrdom is still preserved within this wonderful complex. But who was Paul, and why was he taken to Rome to be executed? Paul was born in roughly 8 AD in Tarsus, Cilicia, present-day Turkey. From a young age, he learned manual labor, and most likely the trade of tent making from his father. He also inherited Roman citizenship from his father, which is why we refer to Paul as a man of three cultures, Roman, Greek, and Jewish. At the beginning of the years 30 to 32 AD is when the decisive moment in Paul's life occurred. After persecuting God's church, he was converted on the road to Damascus. After a period of about 10 years, between AD 48 and 59, Paul made three missionary journeys, preaching the gospel in more than 15 countries. His last missionary journey ended his apostolic activity when he was accused by the Jews of violating the sacred space of the temple in Jerusalem and creating unrest in the city. Paul was arrested in 59 AD, accused of creating riots in Jerusalem. After two years of imprisonment in Caesarea, appealing his right to be tried by the emperor as a Roman citizen, the apostle was taken to Rome. We know from historical data that St. Paul was obviously an opponent of Christianity, and therefore his entire conversion process is certainly a process that happens by grace alone. He is also described as a theologian, a great theologian, the theologian of the proclamation of Christ's paschal event, meaning the passion, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. What we do know, according to a tradition taken from the noted 4th century church historian, Eusebius of Caesarea, is that Paul was sentenced to death between 64 and 67 AD during the persecutions of the Emperor Nero, who held Christians responsible for the burning of the city. And it was against this tremendous backdrop that St. Paul's beheading took place, and a visible memory is preserved after nearly 2,000 years in this church, the Church of St. Paul at the Three Fountains. And it's here, in the suburbs of the city, in an area far from public places, where it's lawful to condemn a Roman citizen to death. Killed by decapitation on this very column, preserved today inside the Sicilum. According to the customs of Roman law, the place of burial had to be in the vicinity of the place of punishment. But the apostle's body was buried four miles away from this place, where today stands precisely the Basilica of St. Paul outside the walls. <laughs>